Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Yeah, now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so before we get started on Keto on the Couch, we're actually filming a couple days late. We normally film Keto on the Couch on Fridays. It's Sunday. But it's Sunday. We had a couple of busy days. So, you know, like John Paul had his graduation from Yay. his electrical in in apprenticeship yesterday. So, um, but before we even get started, we have a couple of giveaways we have to handle. We have to re-gift. Yeah, we have to re-gift. So we did that giveaway for the Keto Brick. Which was awesome. Which was awesome, which includes the Keto Brick shirt. And then we have... Three keto bricks. We have the coconut cream, your favorite. My babe. We have the mocha flavor. With the new packaging. And then somewhere in here, there we go, we have the maple bacon flavor. And oh. this one may have the golden ticket in it. How cool would that be? It would not be cool because that means I would not be getting it. Well, maybe they'll take you with them. <laughs> I hope so. Well, they promised that they were going to take me with them. But, uh, and Keto Savage actually just did a video announcing that, like, they still have not had anybody claim the golden ticket. So it's still floating out there. I'm pretty sure it's in our stash somewhere. It might be. So, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, we pull back up that spreadsheet. Does that even fit in your lap? What? How giant is this iPad? It's, like, ridiculous. This is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the new one. I love this thing. Especially because I'm old, so I can see everything. Was this like an Amazon Prime deal? Uh, well, it wasn't an Amazon Prime deal. I got it on special at Costco, who was competing with Amazon Prime. But I was thinking about this the other day. So it's 12.9 inches. Yeah. And I was born in the 70s, I was, you know, 1970. So I grew up, and we only had one television in our house. Was it black and white? It was black and white until I was 13 years old. We had a black and white television, and it was like 13 inches. Oh, my goodness. So I was, I was thinking about the other day, like, this was the size of the TV, the family TV in the house that we all huddled around to watch. Did you have, like, rabbit ears? We had rabbit ears. We had and the little fork. UHF thing on the back. There was Aluminum wires foil. that came off of it. Yeah. yeah. And we only got, like, three or four channels. We got three channels plus Channel 13, which was, like, PBS. So. My grandmother had one like that, and she used to put it on top of her, like, tall boy, which uh -huh. was, like, what she called her armoire, and yet you'd have to stand up to, like, watch it. You had to huddle around the television. Okay, screen's recording, so let's go back to this, go back up to the top. So we have 199 names. What if it picks that person again? Then we're going to have to repick again. Are you ready? Okay. Hey, Siri. Give me a random number from 1 to 199. A random number between 1 and 199 is 122. 122, 122 is... James Van House. James Van House. What a nice name. That's a cool name. That is a really cool name. So James, do us a favor. Here's what you need to do. Please send us an email at twocrazyketos at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, let us know what your mailing address is, and we will ship this right out to you. Hopefully, James actually gets a hold of us. We can't give this stuff away. Yeah. Like, seriously. I don't know what I'm going to do at that point. Maybe we'll have to just give it to our family group. I don't know. So yeah. somebody's got to respond to this. you yeah. got to want three keto bricks and a keto brick shirt. Heck yes. So now, along with that giveaway, so that's one out of the way. We've got two giveaways. The other one we got to do, I was just going to do it, like, using um, Comment Picker. Because mm -hmm. we found a new way we're going to start doing giveaways. Instead of me having to enter every name into a spreadsheet, found a program that will just actually pull all the comments right, right out and automatically random Of do all it. of the different social yeah. media platforms? No, no, no. Just out of YouTube. Okay. But it'll pull all the names out of my out of the comment section and eliminate anybody who's like tried going in there and commenting like 20 times oh, and okay. just give them one chance at it. Wow. And so it kind of just scrolls through and automatically picks it. So we're going to start doing that so we don't have to involve Siri or anything like that. That's amazing. Okay, but for now, we have the giveaway... This was the salt, the Nui cookies, the dang bars, the keto of, brick. 
the ketosis challenge. The five days of ketosis challenge. Which I am so proud of everybody. Yes. Oh my goodness. We saw so many people participate in this. It was awesome. And I also just like seeing your faces. <laughs> just seeing their faces. Like I want to do this every week because I just love seeing your smiling faces. Now this one was a pain to pull the names off was of. It? Because it was across, we did it across two platforms. We pulled everybody who did it on Facebook uh -huh. and everybody who did it on Instagram. Yeah. So I've got the screen. Let me re let me stop the first recording and then we're going to start this one for this one. So when you see this, you're going to see that there's names in red and names in black. All of the names that are in red come off of Instagram. Okay. And then all of the names that are in black are off of our Facebook okay. page. Okay. And then I put them all in a random thing. You can see over here, these numbers, it's all randomized. After I put them all in, we put them randomized. So it's not even by what day you did it. Wow, okay? that's fancy. It's just everybody's entered in here. And so there are 145 entries. You guys are incredible. Now, that doesn't mean there's 145 people. It's our 145 entries because if you did it all five days, yes, then you have five, five entries so in here. I'm so proud of them. Okay, so you ready? Yes. So we'll scroll back up to the top. Hey, Siri. Give me a random number from 1 to 145. A random number between 1 and 145 is 18. 18. 18. So 18 is going to be Just Living That Keto Life. I like that name. Yep. So uh, Just Living That Keto Life, same thing. Do us a favor. Send us an email. And I'm actually going to also direct message you because this came off of Facebook or yeah. Instagram. This was an Instagram person. Okay. So I will send you a direct message on Instagram and just respond back with... Uh, your name and your address, and we will ship this right out to you. Congratulations. Okay. So now that those two things are actually handled, we actually have another giveaway, but it's not going to be on here, mm -hmm. and that was through Perfect Keto. Yes. Perfect Keto is allowing us to give away two tubs of the new base, and so that will be just the winner will be picked by um, – it's a random comment picker for Instagram, and mm -hmm. then we'll direct message them. Which we actually tasted in is pretty It was tasty. really good. So I'm going to start experimenting tasty. with that. So how was your week? It was so good. It was so full. Oh, my gracious. So we began the week with my mom and Caleb in Washington, D.C. Talk about some two crazy ketos. Um, they had a blast. They had a good time. Uh, they did kind of what we did, which is they, like, rented a place that had a kitchen. Right. So that they could be in charge of what they were eating. They saved so much money. They wound up being very close in proximity to a Trader Joe's and also the Eastern Market there in D.C., which had tons of, like, meat stands and stuff. And they loved it. They um, had some of the best bacon of their life, they said, just, you know talking to those like small vendors and stuff. It was awesome. And they got to visit so many places. They got to go to the Smithsonian, the Holocaust Museum. They went to the Bible Museum. Uh -huh. They said it was just awesome. And then they went to the Spy Museum. Okay. And I have to share this because this was hilarious to me. I asked Caleb when he got home, um, what was your favorite spy gadget? Because there were so many spy gadgets across all of these different right. wars. What was your favorite spy thing and he goes i'm gonna go with the testicle pouch the what the testicles pouch okay i was like what now i gotta hear about this one seriously so i guess before they had like x-ray you know pat downs right. and things like that where they can really just see what exactly is going on in your skeleton if you're carrying anything on your person People like these spies would wear a testicles pouch, like it. It looked exactly like actual boys. And Family Channel. Serious, and you would put it on over yourself, and then it would create a pouch that you could sneak in, like deadly devices. Nice. It was amazing. I was just like, I can't believe that something like that existed ever. <laughs> like I would never even think like that. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I was so amazed but they had a great time and then we ended the week with john paul graduating from his like apprenticeship program yep. that was exciting and then in the middle of the week i got all my hair cut yeah i told him give me the yule brenner i actually like it and you actually went to a place that wasn't like five dollars in the back alley so mindy from our facebook family group suggested going to a pure salon which was, I think it's like Aveda is uh -huh. like they're connected with. 
and I have never been anywhere that wasn't like hair cuttery caliber. Usually I have to fight with Rachel. I'm like, you need to go to a nicer place, get a good haircut. And she's like, no, I'm going to the cheapest person I can find. So Mindy, I had actually seen her at church. And like I said, where are you going? And she told me. And so what I was going to do was go and get a gift card because that's what I do. When I want Rachel to get her nails done or something like that, and she's like, I'm not spending the money sneak on attack. it. I sneak attack by going ahead of time and I get like a gift card for the place because now she has no choice to go. The gift card's not but returnable. But what happened was Mindy looked so beautiful. Her hair was so amazing that I was like, I want that. Yeah. And so I went ahead and kind of acquiesced. And they did have a $20 coupon for a new client. And so, yeah, but it was hilarious. You even let them blow dry it this time. It was, well, it was all included. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I think when it's like a fancier place, they do that. But what was really hilarious was when they washed my hair. And they're like, we're going to take you into the hair washing room. And I was like, what's happening? It was dark. They had like candles going. They had like spa music playing. And so she's washing my hair and then she blindfolds me. She puts like this pat of stuff that smelled good, but it was over my eyes. And I was like, oh my gosh, are they killing me? Like what's happening? And then I'm blindfolded. My hair is wet. And all of a sudden I feel the lady pick up my arm and start like rubbing my arm and massaging it. But it was, it was a weird experience. I am not used to that level of pampering. Well, I'm glad you did it. It was exciting. So yeah, I got them all cut. I was like, I went for full value. They cut it all off. But um, but I'm happy. I'm excited. I asked the lady, I said, you decide what do you think looks good with my face? And she goes, I think a short haircut. So let's talk about the week. We had, like you said, we, it was a good week. I had a lot of fun with the 2KK five-day ketosis challenge that we did along with. I was just so proud of everybody. Yeah, I was super proud of everybody. Like putting up their their numbers and and again we're gonna do a similar video on this but I, I really want people people were messaging us like I only got a point four if you got a point four you're still in ketosis absolutely okay don't listen to everyone like the point five it's just a number mm -hmm. and the bottom line is is like even those meters they have a margin of error yeah okay but if you unless you're taking exogenous ketones. If you've got a 0.3, if you've got a 0.4, your body is producing ketones. Higher numbers, all the higher numbers mean is that your body has more ketones to use. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily burning more fat. Exactly. It's one of the reasons why women generally have higher numbers than men do. Well, we have to have something to get you back with because you have all of the scale. scale victories. Yeah. But I was really excited to see everybody posting. I was excited that, you know, other than one day, like my numbers were always higher, which they usually are around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now the cat is going to rub up against I the know. tripod. Come hey, here, get out. There you go. All right. Okay. So then even we went to Blaze Pizza mm -hmm. and the Blaze Pizza, even after eating Blaze Pizza, I was still a 0.4. And all week long, I was only like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, except for I had one day where I was like a 2.0. I was like, wow, that was like really high. You felt boss. I felt good. <laughs> so I had fun with that. Then... But we pretty much ate a decent week. We had a couple of days where we had one keto chow. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of eggs, ground beef. I bought a whole simple. bunch of ground beef because it was like $2 a pound. And then I oversaw the most delicious brisket I think we've ever had. Yeah. So on Thursday, I decided, I guess, was it Thursday? Or was it Friday? It I think was it was Thursday. Friday. No, it was Friday. Was it Friday? Yeah. So Friday, I had gotten a brisket because it was on sale for $3 a pound. Can't beat that. And so I brought it home and it was in the fridge and I'm like, okay, it's time to cook this brisket. And then I realized I had to go to work. So I seasoned it all up and I didn't even have any kind of, sp I didn't have a rub made. Usually I have like a whole batch of rub made. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of randomly grabbed stuff out of the cabinet and I threw it all together, like some garlic and some onion powder and some, I put coffee in there. I didn't measure anything. It was just like a hodgepodge of spices. Get, put a whole rub on it. I threw it into the, into the smoker put the thermometer probes in and told Rachel when those things hit 165 degrees, just go out there and wrap it up. Yeah. And you did, you did a good job. I mean, we probably wrapped it a little too early cause maybe I didn't hit the right spot on the brisket. Mm -hmm. So it didn't have a perfect smoke ring, but boy, we and let that thing, it, we let that thing go. I got home and then we were going to do some filming and stuff. So I guess it hit about 210 degrees around two o'clock. So I turned the smoker down to 200 degrees. So it's now it's not going to overcook because 
I want the internal temperature at 215. So I was just trying to keep it warm. And it sat in there for three more hours. Ooh. And we pulled that thing out at five o'clock. I mean, it was the most Bye. tender brisket. Like you literally like didn't even need a knife. Like it was you almost were impressed, weren't you? It was you did a good job. Yay. Yeah. So Rachel cooked a brisket. So like that was big good. Girl. So we've been eating that for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, and then Friday night. We first time in a long time, right? We finished we the night with some dessert. of the creamy goody crunch ice cream from Killer Cream, right? Well, if you're going to basically like end a challenge that like Goody Beats is involved with, like you got to end it with his dessert. Yeah. But that was the first ice cream we've had in like six weeks. It's yeah. It's been a while. Other than the keto chow ice right. cream. Right. Have you been on the scale? I have not. Okay. I really did follow my own advice. I got off the scale after we had been doing that challenge, you know, and weighing every single day. I was satisfied and I, I feel good. Mm -hmm. So I just haven't gone back on the scale. Honestly, like you look the thinnest that you've ever looked. And that's funny because since we've had our channel, I have hit 129 pounds. Right. But, and I am no longer 129 pounds. I'm sure of it. I mean, the last time I weighed, it was what, what, 138. Right. But I feel good. You, I mean, and my clothes are fitting good. You're seriously like the thinnest you've ever been, and a lot of people have been commenting on the channel and even in person, like just how thin you so, are. So again, the scale stay off the scale means nothing. And well, the, I'll give you a good one for the what scale. What do we call the scale? The devil. The devil. So I do weigh every day because I'm an idiot, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know That's why. Mean. I just weigh every day. So. I have been consistently all week long, 180, 181, right? Mm -hmm. So the other day I get on the scale, I weigh myself, it's 179. Right. I get off the scale, I let it reset, mm -hmm. I get back on, it's 179. I do it one more time, it's 179. Now I'm excited. Now I'm not dressed, right? Your mom was actually at the house. Yeah, he's like, hey, come so in here. So I I'm yell, naked. like, I'm getting ready to get in the shower. I yell at Rachel, I'm like, you gotta come in here, you gotta come in here, you gotta come in here. While I'm waiting for her to come into the bathroom, I go pee, right? right? <clears throat> so now Rachel comes in. I'm like, you got to see this because I'm like super excited, like 179 because now I've got a goal. I want to get under 180 and stay under 180. I don't know why. I just do. So, but it's like now it's, you want to share that information. Yep. So I want to show Rachel this. Is it like if a tree falls in the forest and no one sees it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't it count, really right? Happen. right? So I go pee. Rachel comes in. I get on the scale. It's 181. So I'm like, no, 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 this can't be right. So then I get on the scale again. It's 181. And then I get on the scale again. And it's like 180.9. I'm like, how did I go pee and the scale went up by a pound and a half? Now, I want to say that he maintained good language. <laughs> but he may have said something bad. I, yeah, I was so frustrated. So it's just like, it, and that's the thing is you got to remember, the scale is going to go up and down. And it, you got to go by your clothes. You got to go by how you feel. Yeah. I do want to get under 180 just to see it, but we're also going to start doing some workout programs and we're possibly, you're talking about doing like a, a cut with reverse dieting. We've talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Where we're going to probably do like a cut over 90 days, like cutting a little bit amount of calories and then increasing to try to increase our metabolism. I've been text messaging and emailing rather back and forth with Keto Savage and He'd like to see like you up eating somewhere around eighteen hundred calories instead of Ooh, the fourteen hundred. I like that, that you're guy. Eating. Oh, I knew I liked and that guy. And he'd like for to see reason. me up somewhere around twenty eight hundred calories instead of like the two thousand twenty one hundred I eat, like I, for maintenance. I will say that I would enjoy having some like more toned arms. Right now, I do have the friendliest arms that I've ever met because I can say like <laughs> hi, and then I'm also saying like hi. Down here. So I wave twice every time I wave, but they're very friendly. They're friendly well, arms. When I was messaging with Savage, he was like, um, so what is Rachel's like gym routine like? What gym routine? I was trying to figure out how do you like hysterically laugh through an email? Yeah. <laughs> I almost wanted to video my tip myself and say, uh, really? You know, and he's like, well, you know, let's try some resistance bands. So that's, yeah, we're going to start practicing with resistance bands because then mean, you don't have to go to the gym. I, I like where this is going. More calories, and I don't have to go to we'll the see. gym. We'll see how it goes. I like so that. So we're going to mess with that a little bit. The we're... prospect seems good. <laughs> Anything else going on? Nothing. Just I love you. You love me? I love and you I love too. you. I love you too. I know that next week we're going to be doing a collab. 
We are. With Team David Mon. Oh, okay. I'm very excited I about, about that. that. Yes, and we're going to watch a um a classic horror film. What are we watching? House on ha Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. Okay. And I'm like super, super stoked about this. I love classic movies because again, grew up with three channels. Yep. So wasn't a whole lot of options like on a Saturday afternoon. So my Saturday afternoon was like Godzilla, mm -hmm. like the original blob, like all the old black and white 1950 thrillers. And you know what I like about them is that like the classic movies made you use your mind. Yeah. Right? Like you think about Psycho. He used chocolate syrup for like the blood in that movie, but your mind makes it so graphic, right? right? It really brings it to life. And I think that sometimes in modern films, when they show you so much gore and so much stuff and they take the imagination out of it, it actually like takes away yeah. from the film. So I'm, I'm, I've never seen this Vincent Price classic and I'm very excited about it. So we're basically going to just like watch it and like kind of break up a mukbang, right? Yeah. So. I'm excited. Because we're not going to film the entire two hours and nobody wants to watch the entire two oh, hours. Oh, no one wants to watch us watch a two-hour movie and me going like, hey, can you rewind that? Who's that guy? Where was he from? Like, yeah, no. AD, did, AD Keto does a really cool thing once in a while where he like watches like old movies that he should have watched. Oh, But yeah. has never watched and then like watches them and lets comments with people. I think that's a cool idea. I love everything he and does. Speaking of a movie, I think it was one of his movies that he'd never seen. I, I believe one of them was Top Gun. Did you sing the Bring Him Back? Like a second oh, alliteration, yeah. alliteration of it, like Top Gun, was it Top Gun 2 or Maverick or something like that? I will never forget Top Gun because my, I got in so much trouble. We lost, we, we, bro well, not lost it, but we like broke the movie, the VHS tape <laughs> in our, um, and you were renting it, right? Yes. And so it was like a $150 fee. It was like 70. It was a solid 70. I can remember it and I was young, but I mean, we were in so much trouble with daddy because, the amount of money that I used to get, spend on forgetting to rewind them, I could have bought the movies. Oh my goodness. Because, right, you used to get charged. Like, how many people grew up with, let us know down below, did you grow up with, like, where you had the VHS and you would rent them, mm -hmm. and then you got charged, if number one, if they were late, and then number two, if you forgot to rewind them? We Yeah, be kind, rewind. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we used to get in so much trouble if we returned it and we had to pay, like, a rewind fee. That's actually why I stopped with the red box, even the, the red box now, because it's like, oh, it's only a dollar to rent a DVD. We never spent the dollar. Never return it on time. So we just finally started, you know what? When we want to watch a movie, we're going to buy it on iTunes because that $14 you're spending on iTunes is still less than we're going to spend on the renting of the returning of that rental. Well, they started renting them from the library and the fees that I wound up paying from not returning the, the library rental on time was like, it made it not worth it either. It's just because our life gets so busy. We, we rent it with full intention of watching it tonight. Then we fall asleep 20 minutes in. I know. Geezers. You want to do comments? I do. Let's do Wait, comments. Do we have a subscriber of the week? Yes, we do. Ready? So subscriber of the week. We don't have any pictures. Okay. But our subscriber of the week this week is Steve Haas. Hi, Steve. And so here's what he wrote. Just got back from my quarterly doctor's appointment and things have improved enough that he took me off my blood pressure medication. So now I'm officially prescription medication free. Yippee. He was also super happy with my weight loss and to be honest, just about everything else. It's not bad considering where I was last July when I started keto. At some point, I'm probably going to tell him that I made all this progress doing the exact opposite of what he said to do <laughs> diet-wise. Oh my goodness. Yeah, don't tell him. You'll crush his heart, right? <laughs> I love it. I love these doctors who just refuse to get on board with keto and... It's like they see all of the progress, like your mom's doctor. Yeah. And it's like, so wait a second. I lost all of this weight. Which you asked me to do. My blood pressure is down. Which you it's asked me normal. to do. I'm off all my diabetes medication. Which you wanted for But me. you're still telling me this is the worst diet in the world. Yeah. It comes down to pharmaceutical companies are controlling everything. Yeah. You know? And we actually, I meant to forget to mention this earlier, we got... Uh, interviewed by Keto Steve. We're going to be on his podcast. I'm so excited. It's Stephen coming Blake. Out, yeah, Stephen Blake. It's coming out one day this week. I'm not sure what day. We will let you guys know on our Facebook family group when it's coming out. So excited. And it was really I love cool. Him. Yeah, unfortunately, he did message me that something was wrong with the video. So okay. it's going to be on audio only. Okay. But it will be on YouTube and on podcasts and stuff like that. So excited. Um, but one of the questions he asks us is like, where do we see Keto in the future? 
And I truly believe that keto is going to be the norm. Yeah. And that the current standard American diet is going to be like the outskirt diet. Yeah, well, because I think that what what's going to, you know, cause the shift is people are going to put weight loss on the back seat of this and be more interested in keto for the yeah. health benefits. And I just, I believe not just keto, but living a low carb, no sugar, um, like getting rid of all of the refined carbohydrates, the white flours and the breads and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I really believe that you're going to see this type of eating and you're like plant-based whole food. That's going to be the norm. That's what it's going to be what most people do. Really and hoping. then you're still going to have the people who are still obviously going to eat the standard American diet, but that's going to be considered the unhealthy way of eating. And yeah. this, that's where I believe that this is going. Like keto is not a fad. Anybody who tells you keto is a fad, they're just, they're mistaken. They just don't see it yet. I mean, it, it's been around for a while. First of all, the diet was invented in the 20s. Yeah. But I mean, as far as like everybody using it for a weight loss, like it's been more than six months. Mm-hmm. It's it's not going anywhere. You see more and more companies u- utilizing things. Blaze Pizza came out with a pizza crust, right? And it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, and Starbucks we were actually even talked about like, then we don't go to Blaze that often. We don't go out to eat that often. But after we filmed our video on the Blaze Pizza, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it up here. But, like, we've made the decision. If we go back, we're just getting the crust. That crust is worth the extra couple of carbs, and it's worth the extra $4. I mean, I I do think that they need to lower that price a little bit. But just for the convenient factor of eating pizza like a normal person and not picking off all the toppings. It was nice. I liked it. Yeah, me too. So so I think you're going to see more companies having these options. I mean, Starbucks has got a keto menu now. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say, like, before we move on, like, just congratulations, Steve. That is a lot of, like, that is a hard-earned success. And we are so excited. And that's why I get so excited thinking about where keto will be in the next five and ten years. And and Steve's story, this beautiful story, will not be like singular, right? Like you'll just we'll be able to celebrate more and more people getting off medications, experiencing weight loss, and just enjoying their life. Yeah. And I love that. Yep. Okay, so comments. So Anne N wrote Hi, Anne. another great video. My grandkids are now watching them all with us. Oh, that's awesome. I really wish they'd take the sugar stuff serious and take the message home with them when they leave us at the end of the month. I've been using the yarn to track my changes. Oh, cool. Um, I had to take them down when we painted our bedroom, and I have no idea where they ended up. My new mission is to locate them. Oh, that's neat. Currently picking the perfect name. I love that name. I would really like to see Joe in a bow tie. Aww. I mean, Rachel wears the hair bow. Very true. I actually do wear bow ties. You love bow ties. And I know how to tie it. I don't wear clip-ons. He's very proud of that. Yeah, so I, here's a picture for you. You do like bow ties. I do like bow I was actually, when I pulled this comment the other day, I actually was going to wear a bow tie. I was going to put on my shirt, but we got home from church today. I'm like, I am not going to get my dress shirt, but I was going to put a bow tie. I promise we will do a keto on the couch and I'll wear a bow tie. Okay, so Keto Dad wrote, Hi, Keto Dad. Can you do a video on strict keto versus dirty versus clean? That's a great idea. Let's do that. That is a good idea. We will definitely schedule that. Uh, Also, what are your thoughts on the keto, all of the keto products on the market? Okay. Here's my thoughts on the keto products. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to see people going like, oh, don't buy keto products. Like I love Dr. Berry and Dr. Berry will tell you, you absolutely don't need any of these products. You need to stick to the wholest food possible. And I think transitioning to eventually eating whole food is the best thing that you could possibly eat. Only eating veggies and meats and literally not having one keto snack or anything like that. But Again, my belief is that keto and this type of a lifestyle, like low carb, eliminating the sugars, eliminating all of the processed, like, like refined carbohydrates. Yeah. It's not going to go away without keto products on the market because the bottom line is most of us live on the go. Mm -hmm. Most of us live a very busy lifestyle. And if you don't give people an option where like, they're so used to grabbing potato chips. They're so used to watching eating popcorn while they're watching a movie. You're, it's really a whole new life, and that that may be too jarring. Right. Probably. So if you tell them like all of that stuff, you can never snack. You can never have any kind of go, to go thing. People are not going to transition. So 
is with all of these products, I think you're making it easier for people to have the transition. And I think yeah. it's a step. It's like when you get started on keto, you know, we tell you like, just worry about the carbs. Don't worry about like everything else, which goes back to the dirty versus clean versus lazy kind of thing. But eventually you want to move things up. When we started keto, I was still using canola oil. I was still using regular ground beef and yeah. I still use regular ground beef. Sometimes it depends on what's on sale. Mm -hmm. We were eating 99 cent eggs. Now we've transitioned as our budget was able to be manipulated and as we learned more, mm -hmm. but you do it over time. And I think yeah. it's the same thing with all the keto products. What do you think? I think so too. And I think that we have a lot of keto products that are very responsibly made. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I like the ingredients and it's good ingredients. And um, as they come in the market, I mean, we're going to scrutinize it. Right. I mean, I feel like that's that's our duty. Right. Is to to make sure that we kind of like weigh in on what are what are we looking at? What are we right. you know, what are these ingredients? Because I mean you're gonna have you're gonna have some wolves right. that try to attack the sheep, right? And right. and I, I wanna be like a good shepherd and right you know, help people kind of navigate through that when it's, when you're like, what, what is this product? Do I need it? I'd right. like to, for us to, to give good advice when we can. Right. Um, but I think there's a lot of good, good, uh, products out there. I think you have to look at like, where's the product coming from? Like, is it coming from Nabisco? Then really scrutinize it. Yeah. Okay. And even with the products coming out, I, I have a different outlook than some people. You have the people who are super, super, super strict yeah. keto. And like, they're not eating anything that like, first of all, most, as somebody who's super, super strict keto, isn't eating a pro any kind of keto product. They're not no. eating a smart cake or anything like that. No. I will look at ingredients and look at, you know, like, for example, we did a video on reviewing blueberry muffin mix and it used artificial yeah. blueberries. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients in there are fine. Are they the perfect ingredients? No. no. Is it good for a treat? For me, I'm fine taking it. Is it better, and this is what it comes down to for me, is it better than going to the store and buying a Pillsbury cake mix? Yes, it is. Yes. Then you're a step ahead, yeah. and that's how I feel. So is every processed product, is every keto product that's going to come out going to be perfect? No. no. Are you better off eating a Crest bar over a Hershey's bar? Yes. And that's how I have to look at it. And, and it also depends on what are you trying to get out of keto? Are you trying to just lose weight? Or are you looking for the maximum health benefits? Exactly. If you're trying to combat cancer, if you're trying to combat epilepsy or Alzheimer's, then you have to be much stricter than somebody who's just trying to drop 50 pounds and wants to eliminate some inflammation and stuff in their life. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's huge. We'll, we'll expand on it more when we talk about, because that, that would really come down to clean versus dirty versus... I just Strict love keto. that. And if you guys ever have like an idea or something that you think like, hey. Please, again. Yeah, we want let a video us, on this. Give us an idea because, again, we have to come up with five new videos every single week. One is always keto on the couch. Yeah. We always try to do a couple of review videos. And like even coming up with easy recipe videos because we're trying to lead more towards easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it. Rachel's got to be able to cook them. Right. So it always, it's a challenge to come up with new video ideas. So please always send us your video ideas yeah. and send us your stories. Like, I want to be able to like have to go through and find like 15. I'd rather have three subscriber of the weeks than struggle yeah. to find one. Yeah. So send us your stories with your pictures. I love it. Okay. I feel like I should go move the bird real quick. He's starting to get loud. What do you think? Yes, he is. Okay. Try not to knock everything over. As I like almost knock over the camera and my drink and everything else. Well, first of all, I have my drink perched like on the couch. That's not bad or anything. Okay. Jason Butler. Hi, Jason. Everyone check out the Two Crazy Ketos Facebook group. Lots of great information and support there. I love you, Jason. Thank you, Thank Jason. You. Jason, you are awesome on the family group. Like always inspiring star. people and I mean putting up incredible posts. I think he's like got more posts than anybody else. Amazing. It's like awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who participates in that family group. I mean, we really did start that group to create a family. And, you know, sometimes it, we don't have as much time to get in there. We do go in there a lot. But I go in there to answer questions. We keep saying this. And you guys have already answered it. You so. are incredible. It's it's just an awesome group. Just and incredible. I love watching it grow. Yeah. Ten Carb Kim wrote. Ten Carb Kim. You guys are so encouraging. I love you both. Joe, you really helped me break a stall when you demonstrated chronometer in day one keto chow challenge. Oh, neat. 
Um, I, did, I downloaded it. I entered a few random days that I had recorded in another app and I have been using since uh, beginning my keto journey last September. I thought I was doing a good job keeping my carbs under 10 and I was shocked to find I wasn't. Thank you so much for the detailed way you two share your experience. Man, well, I'm thank glad you I can so help. much for watching. Yeah, we're, I'm, that's another video that we're planning. So we have we actually just bought a whiteboard and we're like writing down like everything that we like want to do videos on because we would come up with an idea and then forget about it. Yeah. So that's another thing we've been talking about is yeah about tracking and weighing your food and stuff like that. You know, and the, the one of the reasons I know I sound like I broke a record, but when it comes to like if you are going to track, and it's not a requirement, I think it's a benefit. Yeah. But I believe that Chronometer is the best because you can't cheat the system in there. But I like to cheat the system. I know, but it's you're only going to harm yourself when you cheat the system. So you can go into you know something like My Fitness Pal, and you will find two hundred entries for erythritol. And they're all different. Some of them have the carbs in them. Some of them have, don't have the carbs. Some of them say zero calories. Some of them say four calories. And so I know what I used to do. I used to find the one that says zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero. calories and zero carbs. Basically, and, you're eating air. Right. And all you're doing is hurting yourself. So Chronometer, they verify all the information. I like the fact that they allow you... You can choose net carbs, you can choose total carbs, and you can, and they count everything. They count the half a carb that's in an egg. So Dang you it. can really see everything. Stinking chronometer. So. <laughs> Jane Torres wrote Hi, Jane. I'm glad you talked about gradually cutting your calories. After only six weeks, I've been struggling with a sudden drop. It never occurred to me to drop calorie intake gradually instead of going cold turkey. You have wonderful personalities, and watching the videos feels like talking to friends you've known forever. Aww. Thank you for sharing time, your time with us. Thanks, Jane. So, yeah, again, that, that is why one of the reasons we're talking about like doing some kind of a cut or something like mm -hmm. that and I'll tell you, if you want to know more about gradually cutting calories, Keto Savage's talk at KetoCon was all about like hacking your metabolism and stuff. And he's talking about like slowly lowering it and slowly increasing it. So I'll leave a link over Rachel's head for that. I mean, it was really an interesting talk that he got. I'm glad he posted it on his YouTube channel yeah, so too. that I can see it. Yeah. Because that was one that I wanted to see that we missed. We just but got so excited while we were there. It makes so much sense though. My eyelash is like in my eye. It makes so much sense though. So like, and we've done it, right? You go on a diet, you're eating 2000 calories. Hey, I want to lose weight. And what are even all the calorie counter things? How much weight do you want to lose? Do you want to lose it fast or slow? Well, if you want to lose it slow, like 200 calories, take 200 say, calories off. Does anybody say slow? Right. So it goes, well, do you want to lose a moderate amount of weight loss quick? And like, do you want to lose a pound a week? It says drop by four or 500 calories, right? But Here's the thing. What happens? You drop from 2,000 to 1,500. Your body gets used to that 1,500. And now what do you do? You got to go lower. My thing is like, I'd like to dump two sizes by the end of today. <laughs> like, what do I, what's my calories got to be? Like negative 47? Like I think one of Robert's like the, the best line he had in that whole video where he goes, if you have a trainer and the trainer tells you to eat 1,000 calories or less, fire him. Wow. Because it's just, it's not healthy. Nothing good is going to come out of dropping your calories to 1,100, 1,200, unless you're doing it for like literally a week. I like that he doesn't mince words. No. My sister. Hey, Terry. She wrote, yes, Amazon Prime is dangerous. Yes. I got my order of Redmond Real Salt and toothpaste. Sorry you couldn't make it to Connecticut. Yeah, we really did want to go to Keto Fast. It just it was too short of a notice. And she's like, I would have missed work to go, and then you, I could have had you come and fix some things at the house. Oh, my gosh. I love it. <laughs> Maybe next year. Yeah, Amazon Prime is dangerous. Um, our front room where we film. Did you ever take a picture of all those boxes? Yes, I did. Where we film looks like Christmas, like the day after. It looks like like the... I don't know. That's not even all the boxes. There's piles of boxes. Like the landing strip or of something. Of Amazon stuff. Yes. Well, Keto Chow did send us, one of those boxes, Keto Chow, they sent us stuff so we can start working on recipes. It's like a warehouse in the front row. <laughs> but we got a lot of stuff. We got, well, we got the, we got the uh, ice cream maker. We got, oh, I bought a meat grinder to hook onto the front of my KitchenAid. Rachel's like, what are you doing with that? And I'm like, oh, you don't want to know. And she's like, you're grinding organ meats, aren't you? And I'm like, oh, yeah. We're going to mix some, like, rib, some, like, prime rib or something like that. And we're going to grind it up with some heart and some kidneys. And 
I'm looking for um, a place to stay in the next couple of weeks. If uh, anybody I has don't remember some availability. who it was. I want to, was it Tara? Somebody in our Facebook group is actually the one who gave me the idea. Tara? I, I I'm not sure so it was much. Tara. I don't know if it was Tara. I'll write who it was underneath, but it was in our Facebook family group and she had like extra like meat and so she was grinding it up. I, I want to say it was like ribeye or something like that. Are you sure it wasn't Sylvia? Maybe, maybe it was Sylvia. I don't know. It was somebody. And don't I was like, give him organ meat ideas. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, Keto Savage put up a video on, on like he was cooking up organ meat burgers. Oh, Lord. And we had those heart ones. That was really good. You didn't even know there was heart in it. Have a heart. <laughs> I discovered something incredible on Friday. Uh-oh. You loved it. So we're eating our ice cream. Oh, yes. And we're, we're eating the creamy Goody Beats ice cream. And I was like, I don't know. I just was, I've been, I was craving salt all day. Probably because I work so hard outside. Yeah. So I was craving salt. So I took some Redmond Real Salt and I just like literally over the ice cream cup just like. Shh. And I was like, what are you doing? It, it was so good. You get that, that, the first bite of the Redmond Real Salt followed up by the sweetness from the ice cream. The next thing I know, like every spoon, I was taking like the spoon of ice cream and pouring salt on it and eating it. I think he's pregnant. Well, you ended up doing it with me. I think we're both pregnant. <laughs> Sherry Long wrote. Hi, Sherry. You guys are great. Thanks for keeping it positive, inspiring us all to do the same. I love your choice for subscriber of the week this week. I was so blessed by their story on Facebook and had to share with my oh, husband, yeah. who is not keto. As for the iguanas, maybe you could do your own horror film to raise money to go to the keto convention. That's such a good idea. It's a great idea. We can have Attacking Rachel. Oh, my goodness. Um, she's like, you could call it Night of the Night of the Iguanas and have them go after your keto stockpile. We can't put it in jeopardy, though. <laughs> maybe come up with a t-shirt design with them on it. Make them all work for you. Crazy. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. There's so many of them. Teal Elliott wrote. Hi, Teal. Uh, hubby and I saw a news clip on how iguanas uh, go comatose and fall out of trees when the temperature drops below 40 degrees. It's a thing. He used that uh, clip in church to ask if people might be iguanas when they hear, let us pray in the Greek, consider volunteering in children's ministry. <laughs> Let's take an offering. I always think about that when I hear iguana stories. Love you guys. Yes, that's what happens down here. And that's why we're like overpopulated right now in South Florida because we had a very mild winter. But usually we get... A few days of the year where it drops into the 40s and 30s, and it's just like a day or two. And what happens is, is when you get those cold days, they go dormant. And mm -hmm. so they're up in like, you know, the tree, and then they just start falling out of the tree. And this year we didn't even have it. No. And so they never had a long enough spot to like die from being too cold and... But it's funny though, because they'll fall out of the tree and people, I've seen people like pick them up because they think they're dead and they put them in their car and all of a sudden they come back, come to, back life. to life. They're not dead. I love that though. I love what you talked about. Like, you know, when you're asking people to volunteer or something or yeah, if you're contemplating like joining your, your kids team at your local church, they need your help. Do it. They need your help. It doesn't matter if they look like they've got their stuff together. Like they need your help. So Yeah. You're we're changing kids' lives. We're a little biased, though. Yeah. They need you. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Flynn. Hi, Jennifer. This was a great keto on the couch. So encouraging, so uplifting. I've been doing keto for over a year. Wow. January of 2018. I'm down 132 pounds. Oh, my goodness. But I was stuck at 150, down from 300. Wow. And I got lazy. I less tracked, and then I overate, and then doing IF and a cut. I need a reboot. I gained about five to six pounds. Have you guys had any blips since losing all of the weight? Wow. First of all, congratulations. That is, that is incredible. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So have you had any blips since you lost your weight? You have. I have. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Like you have times where you just, I, I think the not tracking and not being accountable, I think that everybody's going to experience a blimp that way. Like mm -hmm. I, you don't want to track blip, not blimp. Yeah. Not blimp. nobody's, you didn't, nobody's I, blimping up. No, I didn't blimp, but I blip. blipped. But, um, I definitely think that without the accountability, I can really like go further. You don't want me eyeing my right. diet. Like you want me being accountable. And again, I think you just need to think about it as like very clinically, right? Don't, don't get emotional in, in your tracking. 
You're just doing it for scientific research. You're trying to get a certain, you know, result out of your body. So just treat it like this, writing down your calories, tracking your fat, tracking your protein. All of these things is just so that you can get all of the medical benefits that you would like, right? right. So then you take the emotion out of it and it's not so like, oh, I have to track because you know, I'm, I'm very deprived and have to track and I feel very upset about this. Like, just make it a medical thing. Like I'm tracking it to, to get the the best out of the, this food that really I'm using for fuel. Right. Right. Yeah. I, for me, I mean, we track sometimes we don't track sometimes when it I just, don't track, it depends on what's going on. It ain't good. You know, but my feeling is I think it's a good gauge. If you start noticing like, Hey, I'm going the wrong way. Go back to tracking. Yeah. Like, so and that's what happens, you know, with us. Like, if Rachel starts going, hey, like, I'm going up in weight, well, I'll track her for a while. Well, what are you doing differently? Where where are we, like, adding something that we're not supposed to be adding? That kind of stuff. You know, so I kind of go up and down with it. I think it's a great accountability. Now, are you going to be able to track 100% all the time? No. It's very yeah. difficult when you go out to eat. And, again, something else that even, like, you know, Robert said in that video in his show, you know, when he was at KetoCon, he's like, being in the food industry – you know, he's come to learn that you don't know exactly how many calories you're burning. Nobody knows how many calories. No. There's so many factors in your metabolism and your age and everything. There's no way of knowing. But you don't even know how many calories you're eating because he's what he's learned in being in the food industry, there is a 20% leeway. So even his keto brick. So the keto brick, he says, is 1,000 a, a calories. That keto brick can be 1,198 calories, and he can put 1,000 calories on that label. So wow. you don't know for 100% certainty how many calories you're eating. So what you really need to do is start training your body where you – your mind so you can listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Like if you go look at Dr. Barry, if you look at his wife Nisha, they don't track. They eat till they're full, and they don't eat anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, So it just comes down to – starting to listen to your body. But I think tracking is a good accountability, especially if you're trying to track your carbohydrates. Very you much know, so. where am I overdoing my carbohydrates and stuff? So as far as myself, I mean, I've had a couple of little blips. I've never gone like over 185, 186 pounds, but I'll go up and down. And it just comes down to, yeah, like I definitely overdid it on carbs this day. And then I'll go down the next day. But I haven't had like a long-term blip. Yeah. You know? But you. here's what you need to look at. I like the term that you used. You used a blip. Look at the overall trend. Yes. If you started here and you, you know, you don't need to have a straight line from up here. I put my hand in the shot from up here to down here. What you want to see, you, who cares if it's going like this? Exactly. Right? If it's coming down and then it goes up a little bit and then it comes down, and then it goes up a little bit and then it comes down and goes up a little it's bit. It's still ultimately so long in as right direction. the point here is lower than the point here. Yes. That's what matters. Now, if you're coming down and then you have a point that comes back up here, that's where you really have to start being concerned yeah. because now you're completely reversing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So, so long as there is a trend going down, that's what matters. Yeah. I like so. that. Sarah L. wrote, Hi, Sarah. I can relate to you, Rachel, in regards to how well you stuck to the Keto Chow Challenge. I always find it easier to follow through with any challenge when it's for or will help somebody else. Yeah. There must be a way that I can use this to my advantage when sticking to keto when it feels hard. Something I'm going to have to think about. Yeah, definitely. I think that um, ultimately you need to do it for yourself. Like as far as, you know, you starting the diet and, and making a decision to, to do this. However, sometimes when you have to get over a hump, like if you need to tie it to somebody else in order for you to like be accountable, I think that that really helps. We're, yeah. we're about to be heading into, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, big trigger months for a lot of people. And if you need to say, hey, I need to be like exemplifying you know, right eating for somebody else in my life that I would like them to see my success so that they will stick to it and they will make some good health choices for themselves because I love that person and I want them to live. And so I just need to to be a good example for them. If that's what it takes right. to get you through those months and then also to, to be a blessing to others, then 
Right. It's definitely something to think about. Yeah. And, you know, I I know that is something, I mean, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time that you struggle with. Like you do really well when you have to present your results to everybody else. But if there's, but it comes down to accountability. Yeah. Like you're accountable to people who are watching you, to people at church, to people who know you. But when you don't have an accountability is when you can kind of go off of the deep end. Yeah. Which, and I'm very, very thankful for you guys. Like I can't even express like how much you bless me by just like watching us and, and like interacting with us. And so for this week when we were doing like the five day ketosis challenge, like it was, it was, it was a no brainer for me. I didn't even have to think about it. I want to eat right. I want to do right. Because when I am, you know, showing what, what my readings are, I want everybody to know if I can do it, you can do it. Right. I want them to have success. And so I want, I need to have success. So right. I need to stick to it because I want to be a blessing to other people and not a hindrance to what y'all are doing. Right. Speaking of that, and then we'll finish up. We have a couple left. Um, I, I loved that five day challenge. So it's something I want to move forward with is like every once in a while, just with our group, yeah. Like with our family group or whatever, just doing like, let's come up with week challenges. So like, let us know down in the comments, like what are some different things that we can do as a group? Like, you know, like as a group, do a beef and butter fast as a group do like, you know, different things. Cause yeah. I have fun with it. Yeah, I like, me too. we like different kinds of like, this is how you're going to eat for a week because it does keep us on task and it's fun to do it with other people other than just us. We so, want to share that So with give you. us some ideas down below that, you know, not like every single week we'll do a different one, but, but maybe like, we'd like to do one together. a month we'll like, maybe we'll come up with like a community group because I thought it was a really cool idea the way they did the five days of ketosis. Me too. So. Jeff Fisher wrote, Hi, Jeff. How would you rank the keto chow flavors? I want to order some and I can't decide on which flavors. Thank you for your content. Love seeing new videos every day. Chocolate truffle. <laughs> Chocolate truffle. The chocolate truffle is good. I don't know if it's their best one. It's it's a very unique, distinct taste. It's really good. Don't get me wrong. Don't order it unless you like things that are delicious. <laughs> well, okay. So we've tried them all, but I can't really tell you all of them because we, a lot of them we only had one package. Right. And I can't base it on one because we've pretty much only had them all with butter. And the butter is going to change the flavor. There's going to be a huge difference in flavor between butter and heavy cream. Sure. Okay. So I think the chocolate truffle is really good. I think the chocolate mint is really good. Yes. I think the vanilla is outstanding. I feel like, you know how we talked about sodas? You judge a soda by its cola. Judge, I feel like judge you judge a, shake a milkshake by the, vanilla. by the vanilla. The vanilla is outstanding and it's really versatile because you can add flavoring drops to it. Yes. And again, we, we've only tried the vanilla with butter. Again, I can't say this enough. I mean, at least for the butter. If you make the shake and then drink it tomorrow. Yes. You got to make it. I, you can drink it today, but make, drinking it tomorrow is much better. However, again, coming down to the butter, and we only make with butter. We've made a couple with heavy cream pretty much to put in the ice cream maker. Yeah. I've also noticed that, like, I don't handle that much heavy cream well. Like I, the next morning, if I drink, the, if I eat that ice cream, a whole bowl of that ice cream with, with four ounces of heavy cream, I'm up three pounds in the morning. Ew. Now by the afternoon, the weight's off, but it means that that heavy cream is not. It's a sad morning. It, the heavy cream's not completely ruined with me as far as eating, drinking four ounces of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it changes the taste because butter has a distinct taste. It's a good taste, but it's got a distinct taste. I like that taste. What I noticed, for example, I think the orange cream is really good, but when you let the orange cream, if you make it with butter and then let it sit to the next day, the orange is very subtle. Huh. It's a much stronger flavor as soon as you make it or in coconut oil. Yeah. Yeah, it's very like tropical. But I noticed that like the next day with the butter, I got a hint of orange, but you really could taste the butter. Isn't that weird? So it, that. it just the butter changes it. Uh, what were the other flavors we really liked? The strawberry, Snicker not the natural doodle. strawberry. The, the snickerdoodle. The, the, we haven't tried the natural strawberry. That's one we haven't tried. That one's made with um, monk fruit extract. Um, the snickerdoodle's really good. The eggnog. The eggnog is really good. The salted caramel is really good. Mm -hmm. The banana, we actually have two packages and I still haven't tried it. Yeah. I haven't tried the banana. I don't know why. We need to make that into an ice cream. Because it was just because we have like one packet of it and we're going to fight over like who makes it. I mean, I'm going to get it. <laughs> no. You can have your chocolate toffee. 
And as far as the savory flavors, the only ones that we've had so far are the taco, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And we've had the creamy chicken one. That one's really good, too. That's delicious. So. If you want to try all the different flavors, I would say this. Like, they have, like, different sample packs. Sample packs. And one of them, I think, was even on sale. Ooh. Don Kingston wrote, Hi, Don. Just found you recently. I love your content, but more importantly, I love that you are regular folks with a love for God and keto. Very inspiring. Thank you, Don. Thanks for giving us a shot. Uh, Debbie W. wrote, Hey, Debbie. You guys make me laugh so hard. I love your spirits, and I am appreciative of all the information that you share. Mm. I wish I had known you before KetoCon so I could have met you in person. Oh, my goodness. Well, you'll have yes. to come next year. Absolutely. We got to meet. I want a hug. Uh, <laughs> Give me the hug. Kristen Lamar wrote, Hi, Kristen. I appreciate all the product items covered in your videos. We, too, have a strict budget, and buying of all the natural products are a bit more of an investment. Yeah. I mean, we raised three kids. Yep. It costs money to live. So, yeah, I'm really thankful for opportunities where we can test stuff and kind of report back and hopefully give you guys, you know, just some advice on whether or not to even buy something. I love, sometimes I love the no Right when something something is just like yeah no don't bother with this and just close that door and then I don't have to worry about like do I need to like put my hard earned dollars in that direction right I mean and that's I mean again one of the reasons we really started is because we got, felt like we got tricked we talked we've talked about that before and you know one of the reasons we always get the keto crate we get the keto crate and the keto box to try new products try because it. we feel like that's the best way to try products without having to buy an entire case of Smart Cakes, an entire yeah. case of Nush or whatever it may be, where you get a sample of it, and then we can turn around and review it, let you guys know what we think of it. So. Yeah. And then we do buy a lot of stuff. We do. We, if we're in a store and we see something weird, we're always going to pick it up to tell you guys about it. Yeah, just to try it. Yep. So last one. Tara Barnell wrote, Hi, Tara. We do keto as a family. Wow. We have four kids, and some have jobs, and they buy their own food. Uh, when my little darling was 200 pounds at 11 years old, it was time to do something. Oh, my goodness. We've been keto for six months now, and we've lost 120 pounds as a family. Oh, my gracious. No complaints on what I fixed. That is awesome. That is awesome. That we may have to actually have you come on the channel to tell your story. Seriously, that really does my heart good. Because, again, what's what we keep talking about, like, that is our focus. That is our goal of, like, like changing families, not just changing individuals. Yeah. I think that like our story isn't happily ever after if we don't get to like share as a family, right? Yeah. Happily ever after means bringing your family in on this yep. and, and having that time with them to like enjoy and everybody feeling good. Right. Like, I mean, it just, it changes the whole trajectory of your life. Yep. Well, that is the last comment. So yay. That is Keto on the Couch for this week. I can't believe we've done 19 of these. I'm loving it. This Thank is a guys. long one. Sorry, guys. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We love you. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments section below, and we will answer them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Mm -hmm. If you like what you saw today, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.